Jake Flegel. In the late 1800s, the Flegel family traveled from Iowa, settling in the flatlands of western Kansas. Raising four boys, the two oldest boys were hardworking and conscientious, but the other two, Ralph and Jake Flegel, would grow up to be early 1900s outlaws. Heading out to San Francisco, California, Jake became a card shark. Later, they traveled to Oklahoma, where Jake was arrested and sentenced to one year at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary for burglary. When they got out, Ralph was waiting and they returned to western Kansas, to what was by then called Garden City. Neighbors began to notice that Ralph and Jake were constantly coming and going to the farm, and the family was beginning to prosper with a new house, tractor, and increased numbers of cattle stock. The brothers convinced their family that they had done well in the stock market, but what no one knew was that they were really a gang of gunmen who were terrorizing the western states. Jake, the leader of the gang, led them up and down the Sacramento Valley for years, usually raiding big-money crap games and high-stake gambling houses. Periodically, they would return to Garden City when the heat was on in California. Jake was a philanderer and a drinker, but still managed to accumulate a sizable bank account. Ralph, on the other hand, was a tightwad and secretly buried his money in places all over California, Nebraska, Missouri, and Kansas. Historians estimate that the Flegels and their gangs were responsible for 60% of the heists in and around Kansas and California during the 1920s. The brothers rented a new place not far from their parents, where they could plan their capers more privately. Here, in 1928, along with three new members of their, quote, gang, they planned to rob the First National Bank of Lamar, Colorado. Corazon Gargulio, an escapee from San Quentin, cased the bank for the crew. The other two hand-picked members were George Abershire from Colorado and Howard Royston from California. Though planned very carefully, the heist was put off several times due to Jake's superstitions. Gargulio got tired of waiting and left the gang, only to be shot down within days by the FBI. When the day arrived, the four men entered the bank, filling their sacks with $220,000. In their 15 years of stealing, the Flegel brothers had never shot their weapons, but on that day in Lamar, Colorado, the bank president, A.N. Parrish, fired at Royston with a forty-five, hitting him in the jawbone. Jake fired back at Parrish, killing him. The bank president's son, J.N. Parrish, ran to help his father, and was also shot down by Jake. In the ensuing panic, the alarm was triggered, and the gang fled with bank employees Everett Kissinger and End Lundgren as hostages, with the sheriff close behind them. When one of the gang's shots hit the radiator of the sheriff's car, the gang sped away, leaving the lawman behind. Once outside of town, they dropped off Ed Lundgren, the bank teller, but Kissinger was kept on the running board to be used as a shield in case they encountered more law enforcement. With Royston lying in the rear floor, moaning from the slug he had taken in his jaw, the gang sped down the back roads of Colorado until they reached western Kansas. Once back on their ranch, they tied up Kissinger, and then the Flegel brothers buried the money. Around midnight, they finally roused a Dr. W. W. Weininger with a gun to his head, bringing him back to the ranch to tend to Royston. However, when Dr. Weininger did not return home, the townsfolk began a wide search. The doctor was finally found under his old Hudson automobile at the crisscross of a cow path. He was bound, gagged, blindfolded, and shot in the back. A few days later, Cashier Kissinger's bullet-ridden body was found in a weedy patch north of Liberal, Kansas. Like the doc, he had been bound, gagged, and shot in the back. Citizens were outraged. The town newspaper cried for revenge. The law sent out dozens of manhunters, but the gang had already fled to St. Paul, Minnesota. However, Jake Flegel had made a fatal mistake, leaving a single fingerprint on Doc Weininger's old car. In those days, a single print was a long shot, but the law got lucky when a transient named William Holden was arrested on suspicion of a train stick-up. Holden was later freed after providing a solid alibi, but the sheriff sent his fingerprints to Washington on a hunch. The prints were identified, not as belonging to William Holden, but rather to Jake Flegel, who had served time in the Oklahoma penitentiary and matched the print on Dr. Weininger's car. Sheriff's deputies hurried to the Flegel ranch, where Ralph's address was provided as Kankakee, Illinois. Chief Harper rushed to Kankakee, taking Ralph by surprise and brought him back to Garden City in shackles. 
Ralph started talking. Royston, still bearing the Lamar bullet scar, was living a quiet, exemplary life as a father and husband when he was arrested in San Andreas, California. He tattled on George Abershire, and Abershire was picked up. With no lead on Jake Flegel, over a million posters prominently displaying his prison photo were distributed to almost every city and town in the nation. $25,000 was offered for his capture. Finally, he was shot down in a running gunfight with police in Branson, Missouri. Ralph Flegel, Royston, and Abershire were all hanged in the Colorado State Penitentiary at Cannon City.